This is Stuff You Like, you can call me Ursa, and a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Naboo was- wait, no, no, that's wrong. A moderately long time ago, two and a half years in fact, I decided that watching Nostalgia People videos was not sufficient and that I was going to make my own, dang it. Owing to the fact that I knew nothing about making online video that people actually wanted to watch, my first review was, well, not very good. That review was A, of a book, B, not a very well-known book at that, and C, was almost totally unwatchable. No, really, this is the original footage, and no, uh, you will not have seen it before, probably, because I reshot it, because, duh. That first review was of Grand Central Arena by Rick Spohr, which is pulp sci-fi novel published by Bain, which was, frankly, just a rollicking good time. And uh, in the spirit, if not the style, of that review, I'm gonna try and keep this one short, because the sequel has just been released. They are funny, and pulpy, and fast, and just gleeful. They're also not really hard sci-fi, but if hard sci-fi is particularly your thing, I would highly recommend the Boundary Threshold Portal trilogy by Rick Spur and Eric Flint, which has bonus paleontology, and alien excavations, and it's really good. But we're talking about Spheres of Influence, so I'm gonna get back to that. In Spheres of Influence, we join once again Captain Ariane Stephanie Austin, now designated Speaker for Humanity in the Big Wide Scary Universe. In the last book, she and the crew of her ship, the Holy Grail, engaged in faster than light travel for the very first time in humanity's history and ended up in Grand Central Arena. And now, they're back. Dealing with interspecies politics, and intrigue, and kidnappings, and expies from Star Trek? And fanfic characters, and leading female roles from a webcomic. Yep. I don't know any other word to describe it, really, other than gleeful. You just read it with joy and happiness and rainbows and sparkles. And that's the point, I think, that the author wants you to have a rollicking good time, like you would if you were reading old pulp sci-fi novels, but, you know, without the racism, sexism, homophobia, and women as objects thing that you might otherwise find in them. Earth's society at the beginning of Grand Central Arena is as you do whatever you want as long as it doesn't impact us quasi-utopian paradise as could ever be dreamed up. In a society with no real live active threats, humanity has become nice to itself. Does that seem a little over-optimistic? Maybe, but I don't care. I like optimism. I love optimism. I've made an entire web show out of optimism. As dangerous as things get, and even when you're in fear for the characters' lives, you still feel that even if they don't all make it, good will triumph. I like this. I mean, there's plenty of conflict in the story itself, but at the heart of it, there's this positivity that I, at least, really respond to. You can read the first 50 chapters of the first book for free. There will be a link in the description somewhere. Uh, you can read the first something like 10 chapters of the second book, also for free, which will be at the second link in the description thing. Yes. Go forth. Read. Okay? Okay. Now I'm going to go back to preparing myself mentally for the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, and uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks. There may or may not be an episode about the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, but there'll definitely be something. Possibly a blog post. Follow me on Twitter. Okay. See you next time.